give it a few more minutes for a few more folks to join. And while doing that, I'm just going to pour myself a little bit more coffee. Be back. All right, uh, I guess we can uh, get started. So um, I guess I'll give the whole spiel here. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, as a reminder, this meeting is um, recorded and will be put up on YouTube and that uh, your participation in the meeting, uh, by participating in the meeting, you're agreeing to the CNCF code of conduct. Um, cool, uh, so uh, as a reminder, <laughs> You know the the draft of the um, uh, the uh, uh, reference architecture is um, at this point done. Um, we are waiting on. Uh, let me see here. Who is we, what is it we're waiting on? Uh, so we're waiting on uh, and we're waiting on a ticket with uh, CNCF itself to um, work through some of the uh, with the tech writers to clean up bits of the paper, fix some typos, that sort of thing, and also publish a PDF of it, you know, create a layout, yada, yada. And then that's something we can then publish to the community and, um, you know, for comment and, and all those sorts of things. So I believe uh, the only other thing, and this is where um, we want to spend some time with this, is, is uh, discussing about next steps, how, like, what sorts of things do we want to do in the group moving forward? Um, and what sorts of things, you know, do we not want to do, et cetera. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, so what is, so just one other thing from an update from my perspective is there is interest among the salsa group to sort of collaborate a little bit more with what we're doing and figure out where we can kind of um, help each other out, where there's certain, there might be certain things where we might say, hey, you know what? It doesn't really make sense for the CNCF to focus too much on this. It makes more sense for the open SSF, which is a little bit just more broadly security focused to focus on. And then here are things that, you know, are very much specific to cloud native things that, you know, maybe we want to uh, focus on a little bit more. Uh, so th those are the updates from me. Um, does, oh, yes. One second, I will uh, post the, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, I, will, I will post uh, the, uh, the agenda here and let's also, let me go and copy paste some of this stuff so that, uh, remember, put your attendance in there. Give me one second to just add the thing here. All right, and then
Um, so that that's uh, the updates from me. Um, updates from other folks. So I don't have an update, um, but I want to update the agenda um, with the presentation that I've scheduled. I remember Michael, I had shared a blog post from AWS on their DevSecOps tooling and uh, reference architecture for supply chain. Um, so he will be coming after reInvent on 9th. Uh, so I will add it to the agenda as a presentation. Yeah, thank you. I guess I'll throw the question out going forward. Do we want to go more broadly and cover more of the end-to-end -end scenarios here? Or do we want to go potentially deeper, give more options to people in terms of different kinds of build tooling that people might want to run or, yeah. I'm kind of thinking through those next steps of where does it make sense for us to go? And by more broadly, I'm thinking along the lines of, do we get into key management, emission controllers, things on either end of our pipeline? I personally feel we should probably double click into the specific areas, you know, the ones that you mentioned is certainly a good starting point. Especially yep. key management. I mean, emission control, there's been a lot. There's a lot of information out there. Key management so is always one that I hear a lot. It's, it's a good conversation to have. Yeah, I agree on both fronts there. Um, I will say, I think from the emission control perspective, this is just what I've noticed. Um, but I think that there is, uh, there's a lot of effort going on in there. And I think the one of the things that uh, would probably be useful is, is a little bit of um, push from this group to help consolidate some of the different, because uh, it, it seems like, um, you know, a lot of the common tooling uh, like OPA Gatekeeper and, and uh, Kyverno and Cosigned and a lot of these things are all starting to do vaguely similar things. But um, I think uh, one of the things that's been noticed is like they kind of do things slightly different enough where if you try to do, you know, uh, it, it's not necessarily super easy to, anyway, it's something that we should probably just maybe talk with those groups and see if we can, um, come up with some uh, ideas of just like, I don't want to say a standard, but just so, some like, hey, here are some pretty reasonable best practices that everybody should probably support or whatever. Um, th that's my only two cents on on that. Uh, one other thing that's probably worth noting, because uh, uh, I, I know I briefly mentioned this, but this is something. Um, so there is discussion among some of the groups, and I think this is where some of the leads need to come in and we need to have some discussion with them as well. Um, is there is some discussion around, uh, yeah, like what we're doing here in the CNCF, maybe we should focus more at like potentially at a depth level where the, the open SSF and some of the other, um, Linux foundation groups might focus more on a breadth level, right? Where, you know, the CNCF is going to be focused purely on, let's say the cloud native pieces that make it very easy to use and yada yada. Whereas um, maybe some of these other groups that are a little bit more focused around just general, you know, general security um, might look at it more from a, a, a like a big picture perspective. But um, once again, that I think conversation is, is, is very early on just outside of like um, some of that. Uh, I know I posted in um, security chat a few days ago, or I guess it was yesterday, um, of that there were some folks who were uh, discussing um, at the salsa level about potentially, um, hey, does it make sense, for example, to have that supply chain compromise uh, 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 list of supply chain attacks? Does it make sense for that to live somewhere else as opposed to the CNCF because it's kind of broader than the CNCF and maybe the CNCF just sort of references it. Anyway, th those are just a whole lot of things that are that are being talked about behind the scenes, and and I'm sure um, uh, will um, as more of that opens up, uh, there'll be more 
opportunity to kind of talk through some of that. I think that's a really interesting question too, because the CNCF does have projects kind of across the supply chain, but they, they answer kind of a specific version of, um, of those questions for, for the cloud, right? Versus those other organizations. So I think in some ways it makes sense for, for this group to focus on, um, on how to do that, how to build the end-to-end -end using, you know, CNCF technologies with, you know, some other things pulled in where needed. Um, so you can kind of see that, you know, that cloud native workflow. And then of course these other groups can fill it and say, you know, if you're, if you don't need cloud native, you could also use, you know, these other pieces and these are other things that are out there in the broader landscape. I like your thought there on not, not specifically being cloud native because a lot of organizations I work with are kind of split between, you know, supporting, you know, next gen, you know, cloud native landscapes, but also being able to take a lot of those practices and evolve those into their existing environment, their on-prem, you know, VMs, et cetera. Yep, uh, agree 100% there. And, and as you can probably imagine, you know, coming from a bank, uh, a lot of that sort of stuff is still the legacy piece. And one of the things that, you know, was brought up um, previously, and I think in a good way from some of the other um, tag security leads was it probably doesn't make sense for us the CNCF to delve too deep into um, legacy use cases, right? Like we probably are not the right place to provide guidance on how to, you know, secure your COBOL mainframe supply chain, right? We, we're probably better suited for saying, hey, here's what a like heavy container focused, um, you know, serverless, all those sorts of things. Like that's how, you know, we're, we're better suited for that sort of thing. Um, and maybe some of these other groups are better suited for both the big picture and then uh, potentially some of the other groups are, are better suited for some of the more, you know, some of those other specific questions, right? Like maybe FinOS, another um, partner organization is, is better suited for some of the financial services, like the things that are specific to financial services, like as you could probably imagine, like Hey, what what sorts of concerns do we have from a mainframe perspective, and 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 I don't know, like ATM perspective, I don't know, uh, <laughs> like th those are I think things are um, uh, better suited there. Whereas we're you know obviously I think more equipped to handle the the questions around um, using cloud native to supply your secure chain, uh, blah, 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 secure your supply chain, um, and. Um, using uh, uh, yeah using cloud native to secure your supply chain as well as securing a cloud native supply chain All right. Uh, does anybody else have any updates, thoughts, et cetera? Um, I know next week, obviously, uh, canceling uh, next week's meeting because of, of the, the US uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Um, but wanted to kind of uh, see if anybody else had any questions, thoughts, et cetera. I know it's, it's nearing end of year. So for a lot of folks, they don't really have um, uh, a ton of time to sort of uh, work on some of this stuff. Yeah, I guess my, my, my main question is kind of um, like, what's the plan for figuring out what's next for this group? Because I know we've been talking about that a bit in the past couple of weeks. And if, with the holidays coming up and everything, maybe the answer is we, we talk in January, which is which is fine. <laughs> but um, the, uh, I'm just curious, yeah, what's, what, how do we figure out what the next steps are? Is there a process for all of that? Yeah. So um, once again, I'm not tech, you know, I'm not one of the, uh, the leads on, on the group. So I, that's, I, I know that um, Andres uh, and, and, and maybe also Brendan will probably have to be, um, uh, will have to probably uh, be involved in, in some of those conversations. Um, my, my two cents is, I think probably for the next few weeks, given all the things that are going on, um, demos probably make sense if folks have interesting things they think, hey, you know what, this might be something we want to work on um, in the you know short, medium term future. Uh, I, I definitely think you know that this this is now a good time to do that with um, you know us not being able to have let's say a full sort of quorum to 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 sort of 
as, as like in a working session, um, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's that. Um, I know one of the big topics is, do we want to now start writing code for that sort of reference implementation? Um, I know some of the stuff that, you know, Brendan, myself, some of the other folks I work with have sort of built out an open source set of things. Once again, that open source set of things is just purely just like, you know, it, it, it's not a POC, but it is very much a prototype. It only supports, you know, specific things right now. We obviously want to open that up as well. Um, and just as a reminder here, it's, you know, evolving quickly. Um, but this is where that code is currently. There is some discussion as to whether or not that code uh, makes sense to, to exist under the open SSF or under the CNCF or whatever. We're still sort of working through some of those details. Um, but you know, the, the general idea there is um, we are trying to sort of build out something that makes it very easy for somebody in a simple use case to sort of you know, generate attestations of uh, re regarding provenance and all that sort of stuff uh, in you know, using a set of cloud native tools in a cloud native way. Um, so that's one thing that, that is being sort of discussed. Does that make sense for us to drive forward? Is it just not still not ready yet? You know, um, that's one thing. Uh, there's, you know, there's questions about, okay, now that we have the dock out, um, we might want to switch to more of an iterative model because of how quickly things are moving. Like, as you probably noticed, if you've read the draft is some of the things that are discussed in the draft, um, at least at the sort of detail level, uh, are no longer valid because, you know, um, uh, as an example, right? Like, you know, before there weren't great tooling around admission control, but now between Gatekeeper and, and Kyverno and a lot of these other uh, co-signed and some of these other admission controllers, they've added a ton of new features to validate attestations, to validate signatures, to validate all these things. Um, so we might want to kind of switch to an iterative fashion in the doc and just kind of keep updating at least some level of, of the details on that. Um, that. Those are just a couple of examples, but once again, I'm all ears as well for, for ideas on um, what we might want next steps to be. Uh, Steve? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I was a couple of minutes late. So I just, I wanted to clarify something on the on-prem. Was the scope related to mainframe systems that we just don't know how to think about in the sense of distribution and so forth? Or was it related to just on-prem and things that aren't cloud connected? Oh, so it, it's a two, so there's two things. So, um, so one, like the, the high level question is, what should be the focus of the cloud native computing foundations approach to this, right? Like what, what work should we be focusing on and what work should we maybe defer to something like the open SSF, which is a little bit more uh, broadly security related. And so on that front, you know, like a basic example is, Hey, I can see a world where the CNCF is focused on two things. One is, cloud native approaches to securing supply chain. So stuff like using, you know, tools like Tekton, like cloud native tools like, you know, Tekton and, and uh, you know, Kyverno and those sorts of things to then build and deploy cloud native applications in a way where we have uh, some guarantees around provenance. And then uh, separately, it's also, you know, um, approaches to securing cloud native um, uh, supply chain. So you can, you can imagine, right? Like, uh, some of the stuff that we're doing doesn't stop us from, let's say building, uh, Java jar files that do just run on VM somewhere or, you know, on, on bare metal, whatever it is. Uh, you know, there's nothing to necessarily stop us from doing that, but we're not going to maybe provide all the sorts of guidance around, you know, these are maybe some of the concerns you might have when you're, purely working on longer running hardware or longer running systems, um, we might not get too deep in, into that. D does that make sense? Yeah, I'm, here's the struggle. And I, 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 I'll say it and I know the challenge of saying it. What is the definition of cloud native? Um, 
we have struggled internally at Microsoft multiple times. Everybody's got a different opinion. It's just, it's a generic thing. It's not the first time we try to figure out how to define a term and everybody's got a different perception of it. I, the thing that I'm trying to get a sense of is how much of on-prem, even though you're doing containers and all of those, you know, whatever technologies we want to talk about, but the on-prem is an extension of the cloud. They're doing everything that we would do in the cloud, but they have reasons for doing it on-prem. It's not just legacy hardware. It's not even just legacy practices. It's just for whatever reason, like there's a dozen different reasons. It's not really important to try to clarify. It's, it's another location. And then the other part of it is it's the whole VNet problem. The, the, the What we sometimes think of as air gap, and, but air gap is not submarines and oil platforms. Air gap is every company trying to build a secure system wants to limit egress and ingress. So at that point, if I don't have access to everything all the time, it doesn't matter where it's on-prem or in the cloud, I still have the same connectivity constraint. So that's what I was trying to get a sense of, do we define cloud native as I can connect to any cloud at any time and I assume everything in between is reliable or is just modern practices for what we define as modern today? Yeah. Um, so. I agree with you, to be clear. I, 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 I agree with that sort of general um, thing there. Want to get other folks' thoughts, though, um, on, on that. When, when I think of cloud native, I think of more on the technologies, not a deployment of where it's going to be deployed. I can go ahead and I can deploy VMs. I can put, I can, as you mentioned, Cobalt in AWS or in any one of the cloud providers. But is it really cloud native? Not really. It just means I'm hosting it there. So I, yeah. I, like to focus, I like to focus more on the technology implementation of cloud native versus a, I can deploy a Spring Boot application that just happens to be sitting on a VM somewhere. That's not necessarily cloud native. It's getting closer, but not necessarily there. And to piggyback on that, I would say that I would define it by looking at a lot of the other products within the CNCF and saying, is it possible for us to integrate them? Not that we have the integration, but just are we designing solutions that could be integrated in there? So that's that's the take out we'll look at it. Maybe one other thing to slightly sidestep the the the, the definition part would be. Um, I think it would be an interesting opportunity to connect the reference architecture to the actual release process, build process. They like this secure software supply chain of a CNCF project. So we could not only say like, hey, here's the reference architecture, but you know, this project has decided to adopt the reference architecture. They've made these decisions and this is how they're delivering uh, a secure and you know, compliant version of Vitesse or you know, some other, you know, any CNCF project of like, that could really help connect the reference architecture to a real world um, example that would take effort on our part and, and their part if they're interested in doing that as well. But. Yeah, on, on that front, um, so as a reminder, need to, you know, a lot of this stuff uh, I want to make sure is, is done with the community, but there, there is, um, there is some interest among, for example, the salsa folks in sort of saying, Hey, can we take some of the, the reference architecture? Can we say, okay, yeah. And based on what the reference architecture is doing, you should be able to be, get like a salsa, this, this level of a salsa attestation. We also want to say with that reference implementation that we want to build out or that we are building out and trying to still figure out exactly where that lives. Um, okay, cool. Now you have, let's say something like salsa attestations around that and so on and so forth. And then can we then go and say, okay, cool here's a CNCF project, they're using that infrastructure in some way, right? To then build, you know, build it out, get their salsa attestations and, and, and or whatever, and, and so on. Uh, Steve, Ava? I guess, yeah, sorry, I guess maybe the thread I'm pulling, because I, I, I intentionally made a little open, so I was curious whether people thought about various aspects. I, I think the automated build, what I would, kind of say is a, a very cloud native thing that I don't think much people would disagree with. Like if you 
you shouldn't be able, almost the opposite of, you shouldn't be able to manually build and deploy something and bypass systems. Like there should be, I won't even say what they are, but systems in place that says it must come from these build designated environments, which I think the thread that I'm really pulling on is the connectivity aspect. And that's the part that I'm just trying to get a sense because I we keep on I keep on seeing some of these things come up and I'm just wondering how much are we taking in scope that connectivity is not a given, either because of reliability or because it's it's it, it uh, it's explicitly blocked. And I have to double check the salsa levels. I would hope salsa level, like the highest level, includes completely isolated environments. Like they can't talk outside of their uh, environment. So I, maybe that's the thread that I'm pulling on and just to see how much we're building dependencies on assumptions of connectivity as opposed to um, building dependencies that I can be completely disconnected and still get a secure uh, validation. So building on that question and asking it a little bit differently, um, when I've previously stepped into this meeting and looked at the secure software factory work that folks here are doing, which is great, um, I've had trouble squaring that with the way Salsa describes the level requirements, many of which are not uh, use a tool. They are optional configuration choices or approaches to using a tool. Many of the tools listed here in the SSF and, and the, the documents we've all built previously could be used in ways that do or do not meet salsa level requirements. And it seems very much not aligned, like not leading towards the same goal. Um, for example, uh, salsa level three and four, use an ephemeral build environment, salsa level three and four, have an isolated build right, have it permetic, it's also level four, to um, Steve's point, can you do the build in a way that does not reach outside the build environment that is isolated and hermetic? Um, that has nothing to do with, with which software you use to do the build, but how you've configured the environment around it. Oh, you, you're absolutely correct. But I think that given um, what I would say a reference implementation and what the reference architecture is describing is the reference architecture isn't necessarily just purely describing a set of tools. It's describing, um, you know, a high level set of systems, tools, et cetera, that you need to use in specific ways to sort of get, um, you know, uh, a level of supply chain security. Now, as far as a reference implementation, right? I, I, I agree as well, where a reference implementation is not just gonna be install Tecton and install chains. It's going to be you know, something like install Tecton and configure it this way, apply this policy against it and so on. Um, and yeah, yeah there, there's still probably going to be uh, some, at least for the time being, some, I don't wanna say hand wavy, but some fudging of the things is saying like, hey, look, we're sort of saying we're going to describe certain things like, yes, if you make a pipeline that says go out to the internet and, you know, we're not going to stop you. Um, but what we, what we might say is like, but if you, if you do that, you, you know, your salsa attestations are not going to be at the, the level that you expect, you know, that they could be if you were doing it more from a hermetic or a reproducible, you know, those, those sorts of things. And you, if you want to line up to the salsa levels, you might um, prescribe certain configurations, such as uh, enable outbound network access that limits you to salsa level two. Um, I'm, I think that might be three. I'm not sure. Um, or you know, you prescribe configuring a particular component of the tool chain that prevents outbound network access, and that helps build the attestation for a given salsa level. Is that how you're thinking of it? Yeah, largely. And one of the things like there, there's two um, approaches. One is the kind of like, hey, this is what we're kind of showing as something that you might be able to just do yourself. And we're just going to describe in, in some documentation, like this is maybe what you should be doing. But then there's also the potential for using um, 
policy systems to actually enforce some of that, to say that, hey, if your pipeline, you know, maybe we can have something like a, um, you know, Salsa 3 pipeline compliant or something like that, right? Where if you try to deploy, uh, you know, a pipeline to this environment and you want to say, yep, I want a Salsa 3 pipeline, but it, you know, goes and does something that would be against Salsa 3, it'll say, well, hold on, you're trying to deploy a new pipeline that ain't going to work. You, you know, you need to abide by these rules. Like that's kind of uh, another approach that, that we're, I think, looking at. Okay. That's cool. Um, and then pulling that back to Steve's question, um, would I be correct to assume that as you're describing those different um, you know, recommended configurations, some of them might consider disconnected scenarios as uh, you know, very important and some might not? Or how, how are you thinking of, of disconnected scenarios since those are still clouds? Yeah, so real quickly, um, yeah, I think what we said at first is like, we're not really considering sort of like an air gapped environment, let's say right now, but um, in the future, we are probably going to be looking a little bit more at those sorts of things. And largely when, when, when we look at cloud native, we're looking at it from like the CNCF perspective of mostly, you know, I, I don't want to uh, totally paint with super broad strokes, but like mostly just like sort of containers, Kubernetes, that kind of thing. And it doesn't necessarily need to exist in uh, like a public cloud, a private, you know, it, it could be any of these sorts of things. And it could okay. be, for example, a Kubernetes running in an air gapped environment as well. Um, and some of the stuff, some of that sort of stuff, we've been deferring kind of to our best practices document for now, like saying, you know, if you are running in an air gapped environment, you should be bootstrapping your, you know, your environment in these ways and, and that sort of thing. But, but as time goes on, we do want to maybe build out the tooling a little bit more to support those use cases a little bit better. That's deep. Yeah, maybe. I mean, look, I love the iterative model and the whole bit. And I think maybe it just comes back to kind of the question Ava was just saying is, is this a scope? Like if we can capture that this is in scope for what we want to support here and it's just not done yet, that's great. Because then it sets expectations um, for what's coming and don't discount A, B, or C because it doesn't support it yet, but it is... to the effort in an end-to-end -end experience to what scope they should be thinking about. So, you know, it's, it's okay to have obviously cloud connections at certain points, but I like guess has been a, a fundamental thing we've been doing in Notary and Oras is making sure that things can move across environments, be promoted, and location is not tied to identity so that you can, you can move and validate something and you either may not know where it originally came from or you can't connect to where it really came from it doesn't matter so it's just a matter of are we defining that in the scope and it's just not done yet and that would be great yeah um and and on, and on that front we do get a little bit into that in the uh reference architecture document um as uh you know we, we do try to say hey the, the idea here is that you know, if you have attestations associated with an artifact, those attestations and the artifacts can move around and that doesn't necessarily uh, materially change, you know, change anything. Um, I, I think that there's probably some details we, we want to get into for, for the next sort of thing. Because I think um, one of the things we do want to get more perspective from is some of these you know, environments where, you know, uh, you might have very large heterogeneous environments and you might have certain more isolated environments. You want promotion into those isolated environments based on certain policies and whatever. And, and so, so some of those environments might have different sets of security concerns and, and different policies and, and, and so on. Yeah, and promotion out of an isolated environment also. I mean, it's like it's both sides because the original build environment, you might not have access to from when it is distributed to end users. Anyway, yeah. just, I, I, just trying to capture, because you mentioned something about what this group might do versus other groups in CNCF do. And I'm hoping it isn't an or rather an and 
that this group might be focused on this level of scope, but it's not at the exclusion of something else. Something else might just be added onto it. Or as you know, Ava was just saying, it might be, hey, you're doing this thing, but you decide not to do air gap. You decide not to do something else. So you don't get that salsa level compliance. And that's okay for your choice. And whether we're yeah, talking about a, I said a build environment or being able to deploy to an air gapped cloud, those are also um, valuable distinctions to capture. Yeah, yeah. And and um, that was something that I think, uh, at least for the time being, I don't want to say was 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 out of scope, was more or less just um, we deferred to a future point to kind of dive too deep into that because so that is described a bit in the best practices document back from May. The issue is um, when it came to a lot of these things is we, we recognize that the air gapped and, and, and some of the other elements around sort of how do we bootstrap trust and should we sort of say, you know what, bootstrap trust at a, at a hardware level and use hardware keys, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and there's a lot of those sorts of things that, that we sort of said, hey, look, there's a lot of movement in that area and we're not 100% sure where we might want to um, you know, consolidate on. So we, in the architecture document, we do sort of say, hey, look, you know, some of these things might have to be a little bit different depending on um, if you are existing in an isolated or air-gapped environment. But as next steps, we definitely do want to dive into that a little bit more. And we also want to bring in, um, you know, experts, you know, for example, you know, confidential computing and 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 uh, so on. We, we, we probably want to bring in folks from a lot of those sorts of groups to, to sort of help us figure some of those things out. Uh, did that make sense? Sorry, struggling for mics as I'm walking around. Yes, uh, that makes perfect sense. I just, I, I love to hear that it's in scope and it's just not available across all things yet. So it just becomes a checkpoint for people to say, I don't support this yet, but I will, or I won't, but it is something that's in scope. So as projects are figuring how to integrate with this thing, it's one of the things they have to keep in mind um, because that will be an expectation from users at the end of the day. Yeah, and and to be clear, uh, in the way that the reference architecture is written currently, is that the, we don't really make much of an opinion on access to the internet or no access to the internet, or you know, I you know, and and rather I should just say, uh, we don't really make much of an opinion right now regarding uh, how isolated your environment is, and we do sort of say, hey, look, there's going to be certain additional guarantees you will get based on how isolated your environment is. We're not going to kind of go too deep into it right now, but as time goes on and we kind of figure out a little bit more about, okay, yeah, if it's a completely air-gapped environment, here are the things you're gonna to have to work with, right? Cause you're, you're, you're gonna to need to say, okay, well, there's gonna be need to be ways on how you get you know, access to, let's say dependencies, source code, those sorts of things. You might say, okay, well, okay, that's, we're going to have uh, an environment with those things assumed to exist or whatever, right? Like there's going to be that sort of thing. And then, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to uh, <laughs> belabor the point there. It's just mostly um, as it stands today, the, the, the art reference architecture doesn't um, make an opinion one way or the other on whether you should or shouldn't do it based on particular circumstances, that's kind of, I think, something that would be very useful in the future to sort of dive a little bit more into. Yes, you know, what we described in the reference architecture would work in a non air gapped environment. It would work in an air gapped environment. We don't really make much of a decision based on that uh, today, but we can provide maybe details in the future on what things. Like from a concerns perspective, you have to be concerned about with if you go isol, you know, different levels of isolation, um, as well as what additional security um, benefits you get based on different levels of isolation. I, I, I took up a lot of time. I just wanted to get something to scope. If others want to talk more about it, great. I, I, I think I got what I was concerned about.
I mean, I am curious what other people think, but you know, it's uh, so by all means carry on. Sure. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Does anybody have anything else they wanted to bring up or do they have additional thoughts on what Steve and Ava uh, brought up? Um, if not, uh, we can, we can end it a little early. Um, as a reminder, next week, uh, meetings canceled. Uh, most folks will be out for the Thanksgiving holiday here in the U S. Um, and so our next meeting will be, uh, I guess, uh, December 2nd. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's really about it. Let me just double check here if there's anything. Let me check if there's anything else here. Um, and as a reminder, um, you know, that, that thing I linked before regarding, you know, this open source software, like definitely interested in seeing, you know, if anybody else poked around with any of it, have any questions, concerns, et cetera. But um, yeah, and once the uh, ref, the draft of the ref arc it goes out, we should, um, you know, we'll, we'll be asking for obviously public comment and, and, and so on. And then um, as another reminder uh, for anybody who had sort of joined late, um, you know, one of the things that we are probably going to do in the future is the ref arc for this thing is, um, I get that usually you want to say a reference to architecture is not something that sort of changes every other day, but given the, the, the nature of the supply chain space and how quickly um, different things are moving in it, right? Um, you know, we might end up making it into something that's a little bit more iterative so that folks recognize that, hey, some of these things that didn't exist last week now exist uh, and those sorts of things. All right, cool. Um, if there's nothing else, uh, see you all in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Bye. For Bye. those not in the U.S., hope you enjoy a break. <laughs> Everybody's relaxed off offline. <laughs> yep. Take care. Yeah. Later. Oh, <laughs> hey, Axel. <laughs> right. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> so it was now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> no problem. Uh, to to give you the the quick yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah to give you the quick summary here. Um, so what happened? Uh, so yeah, um, waiting on the CNCF to clean up the doc still and and uh, have a PDF on it. Um, what else? Uh, we talked a little bit about starting to have some discussions on. Okay, now that you know we're going to be releasing the ref doc, what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> Good point. Yeah, and. Um, you know, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, what, what, what are the sort of next steps after that? Like, are we talking about, are we going to keep working on the doc in an iterative fashion? The answer is probably yeah. yes. Um, but we want to make sure that people, we want to make sure that there's almost like, there's some clarity that we're, we'll probably do something like this is V1 of the ref doc. Recognize that there's going to be things in here that are no longer valid, but in broad strokes, they should be valid. And as we go through like a 1.1, a 1.2, et cetera, of the doc, that like, we also don't want to overwhelm folks with, you know, we want people to recognize that, sorry, this is not something you could just buy off the shelf and you get your, you know, you get your secure supply chain. It's just not, yeah. it just doesn't exist today. It's not going to yeah. exist for a while. Um, so, so there's that. Uh, other things are, you know, in the upcoming weeks with the holidays coming up uh, for, for most folks in, you know, um, you know, Western countries, it's, uh, we're, we're saying, hey, maybe the next few weeks, um, obviously besides next week, which is the Thanksgiving holiday here in the US, which so no meeting next week, um, we're going to have uh, probably some demos, some sort of just 
you know, chats, maybe some discussions about next steps, right. but probably right. the will really, really ramp back up again in January. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And yep. And so one of the other things is, you know, uh, talked a little, you know, brought up that sort of thing, this secure software factory, which we're still trying to figure out whether or not it's going to live under the CNCF, live under the open SSF. Okay. There's some okay. discussion. There's some discussion right now about um, between the groups, between the various leads of open SSF, mm -hmm. CNCF, and so on is, hey, we're doing some supply chain stuff. Does it make sense for the supply chain? Like it, it probably makes sense for the CNCF to work on some supply chain stuff. Yeah, but definitely. does it make sense for like it probably doesn't make sense for the CNCF to say, yeah, we're you know we're going to help you out with your COBOL mainframe supply chain work. That yeah. probably makes sense at the FinOS or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and Open SSF maybe makes more sense because they're super focused on the open source piece. Maybe it mm. makes sense for them, and they're doing this with. I'm not sure if you've uh, seen some of the salsa stuff that's coming out of Salsa. But um, a bit, yeah, at, yeah. At the salsa level, they were like, "Hey, look, we're looking at getting salsa attestations on um, PyPI, right? Like, like on the Python packages." And yeah. so already they have across thousands of packages able to get like salsa level two attestations. And so, hey, that's great, right? You know, and so they can focus more on sort of this broader mm. open source picture. And there's maybe a couple other groups that can focus, like for example, the confidential computing consortium or whatever, they can focus maybe more on the hardware making, you know, in, in a few of these other things. Mm. And the, you know, and the CNCF can maybe focus a little bit more on A, securing cloud native supply chains, right? So using- um, Makes sense. Uh, and, and, um, uh, um, and there is uh, there is also then the other thing, which is like a cloud native approach to securing supply chains. So like, yeah. hey, using cloud native tools to secure your supply chain, right? Because certain things like, hey, if you're using Spire, a lot of these things become a lot easier. Like mm -hmm. once Spire is integrated and everything. Um, oh, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> There's, there is, uh, um, and, and so that's kind of the, 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 the discussion on that front. There is discussion about, hey, here's this reference implementation. That's the code I sent, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in chat here. Maybe that makes, you know, uh, we have a lot of work that we're sort of working on in there to kind of make it, you know, this is a lot of the stuff that, that uh, we're doing um, off on the side here. Uh, to be clear, it's all open source. At some point, we want a group to sort of take it and sort of, we don't want yeah. to just be, you know, like the the Mike and his team show. <laughs> um, we want it yeah. to be the, the broader sort of community. And we want to say, hey, look, you know, this is just a set of tools that we were using at the time. Um, yeah. But the idea here is, is you know, um, probably a couple more weeks worth of work, but the, uh, you know, you'd be able to run a single script you get everything sort of deployed. You'll be able to kind of run pipelines. Those pipelines will be um, will have a policy associated with them. So if you try to deploy a pipeline that isn't secure or like is very clearly not secure, it's going to go and yeah. say, "Hold on a second, you're trying to yeah. deploy a pipeline that doesn't make sense." So those are the, some of the things that we're looking at as next steps, um, among you know other things. And to be clear, like that's just me uh, right now need to get Andres and, and Brendan and some of the other uh, security tag leads to, to discuss this a little bit more. Um, and yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that, I know that's helpful. That gives me, you know, sort of an idea of what's going on a for the next weeks, but also, you know, in, in the actual project, we're talking about repositories, projects, all of that. Uh, one second. Um. On, uh, 
Um, yeah. Uh, any other questions, thoughts? No, not really. I mean, I I still have on my list to do of being sort of bogged down with something else, but to sort of run the secure, you know, so, um, the software factory locally. Um, so that's that's one of the things I've been meaning to play with and sort of um, see how I could contribute. So if you've got any recommendations on how to contribute to that, I'd be, you know, I'm up for that. Yep. Um, so one is the best way uh, right now is just try and run the thing mm -hmm. and open up an issue. If you just go and say like, this doesn't make sense. Like I, I couldn't get it to run. I think that's, I think the, the, yeah. the number one thing is just if, if it takes more than like a couple of minutes for you to figure out how to deploy the thing. And then to be yeah. clear, like, I think there's still some work we need to do to make it clearer on how to run some of the example pipelines and how to get a, yeah. your own pipeline running that that's something that we need to work on. But if it takes more than a few seconds for you to, you know, or a few minutes for you to figure out how to deploy the thing. And largely I believe it's, there, uh, things are moving really, really quickly on the team. Um, mm. Is it should just be something along the lines of like make SSF and it should install uh, to whatever your Kubernetes context is. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, if if it's much more complicated than that, uh, we want to make it simpler. And so, right. um, and then some of the other things that we've been really pushing is so. There's obviously some, so I'm not sure if you've seen Q, the language. Yeah, I've had a look, a look at it a while ago. Um, I mean, a while ago, like a month or something. It looks yep. really interesting. It looks very clever. It solves a bunch of problems. So. so we are using that pretty heavily in there. And the reason being is, so I like Helm. What I don't like is Helm templating. Okay. Um, and that, what the reason being is just that with Q, it's kind of a different thing. Like with Helm, it's kind of, you you sort of inverted control a little bit where it's like your templates are pulling stuff in, mm -hmm. in, in a certain way. Whereas in with Q, it's no, no, no. My Q functions are generating my configuration as opposed yeah. to my configuration pulling in the values it needs. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. some of those values, it can be a little unclear where they exist. And it's just, it yeah. becomes sort of a thing where, whereas here it's like, I can have a function that is, something like generate keys. And then I can go and say, okay, well, now I just pass in these keys into the functions that generate, you know, uh, my Kyverno policy. Okay, that, can, you know, and it makes it very easy for me to um, do a lot of that. Now, the problem is to some extent that Q is, is not the easiest to, um, they have some, there's some concerns with their docs. They're just not very good and they recognize they're not very okay. good. They're, they're, they're actually, planning to uh, refresh them pretty soon. Um, they are also looking to sort of uh, clear up a few things that are literally wrong in the docs. Okay, uh, sounds helpful. Well, uh, as an example, they don't use C style semantics for um, like if I do X and Y, you know, C in, you know, C style semantics should say that if X is false, Y never evaluates. They don't okay. do that. They actually evaluate both of them, meaning that if you have something like, if X is null, you know, oh, sorry, if X is not equal to null or not equal to undefined or what they call bottom in this case, um, and you might say, and X contain, you know, if X uh, and, you know, perform some operation on X, well, you end up with a thing oh, where sorry. you could run, you know, you perform an operation on null value, right? You know, um, which uh becomes an issue so so like there's a couple of things there and to be clear they're, they're clearing a lot of that up really really quickly but beyond that i really really like it especially in the fact that today i can just go in and say i can import kubernetes custom resources that looked yeah that the yeah. import function looked really powerful when i looked at it you know as yep. i was saying i mean just looked at it not really not an expert but it looked, it looked oh really I, i'm not an expert either but powerful yeah it, it well, allows well us to out just, a good way of putting yeah. too. but I can just go and say, Hey, I have Tecton and Kyverno. And I could just, at that point, I know I can't at, at essentially it's not compile time, but pretty much compile time or whatever it is at, at conversion time, I can make sure that I am actually using the spec. Um, yeah, and yeah. I can further refine the spec. Yeah, you, and can so on. 
you can sort of encode that in the template prior to exactly. actually generating the data and say just it won't it won't if it doesn't match the template it just won't do it yep yeah okay cool well, that'll be a great opportunity for me to try and, and play with q a bit more and you know in, in practice um i i rather like the whole you know finding like trying to deploy bumping into stuff and then documenting that and ideally pushing you know uh, suggested changes to improve that so that's something i will happily do so I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at that and probably expect some pull requests in the near future yeah yeah sounds good cool all right thanks a lot for the for the roundup yeah really helpful um yeah catch you online and uh yeah thanks again yep welcome cheers Talk thanks a lot michael bye-bye